Hello, so let's look at the process of painting this piece. Uh, this is my fourth time making it and I finally got around to recording a real-time version I can share with everybody. So I start out with the color that's car yellow. It's a nice warm yellow. And then I add some carmine. I checked the pigment info and this is PV19 from Da Vinci Paints. If you don't have the exact one, any cool red would do. I have not wet the paper beforehand, so all of this is wet on dry. What you see me doing now is holding the book at an angle so I can achieve smooth blends with the help of gravity. I go back in with a little more yellow pigment and then wash some of it down. I'm using a series 490 Da Vinci brush. I haven't played around with it too much so I can't say too much about it except that I really like it. I'll have more information in the coming weeks. So this is just me adding more carmine to make uh, the edges more saturated. Going back in with more car yellow. If you want the light to be really bright, um, you would do better not to mix the yellow too much with the red. I noticed after I was done that I had a more moody feel because I had somewhat mixed the yellow with the red. So I pulled some of that yellow down um, so it could, uh, you know, form the lightest parts of my piece. This will, uh, you know, add the light to the foreground once we add some darks to it. Don't worry too much if you don't get a clean blend. We're going to go and put in some trees, um, which will, you know, kind of uh, push some of the pigment out anyway. So if you don't have an extremely clean blend, that's fine. And now I'm just um, mopping up some of the yellow so the center part can look a little more light. And if you notice what's happening, some of the red is getting pulled into the yellow and you will see the final effect will look a little more moody as a result. If you don't do that, you'd have brighter light if you just left the yellow without mixing the red in. So now I'm using Ward Jeans Dusty Green. I just absolutely adore this color. This is from Cheap Joe's American Journey. Uh, it's a beautiful color, it splits beautifully um, and it's, it's a great, uh, great mid-tone green. So what I'm doing is putting down um, a tree line and if you can notice it, um, uh, it kind of becomes smaller towards the horizon. This will later help um, show some depth in the piece. Just intensifying some of the edges. More pigment towards the tapes, less pigment towards the center. You want things that are off in the distance to not be too saturated. Um, you want them to be fussy without too many details. Uh, things that are closer to you, you want more details. And now I'm dipping into a darker green. This is earthen green from American Journey. And I'm just putting in some, some of the dark green um, into the tree line. I'm leaving the sections that are closer to the um, middle untouched because I want that to still be a very light, light green, very fuzzy off in the distance. So I'm concentrating all of my darker colors um, closer to what would be uh, the middle ground. And right now I'm dipping into some indigo. 
adding it to the base of the tree line. This portion of the tree line is closer to us. So I'm adding a little more darks there. So I'm still playing with some indigo. Rinsing off my brush. Now I'm dipping into again some earthen, I'm um, sorry, ward jeans, dusty green. And I'm going to put in the little um, bits of uh, land. So this composition has a windy pathway that goes off into the distance. So this is one way of making the pathway. Instead of painting the pathway, you can paint around it. So negatively uh, painting around what you're trying to depict. So I'm painting around the pathway and once I'm done, the pathway will emerge, but I'm not painting the pathway. So that's negative painting. So again, all of this is just ward jeans, dusty green. So I made a little uh, triangular shape um, on the left hand side, followed by a triangular shape in the foreground. And then I'm adding smaller triangles off in the distance. You can think of these shapes, uh, it might make it easier for you. Um, otherwise, you could, an alternate way to approach this would be to paint the path positively with maybe some lighter yellow and then fill in green on the other uh, sides of it. There's a million different ways to do the same thing, achieve the same effects. Do what works best for you. You could also draw some of this in. You don't have to do it without a sketch. You could always put in a sketch if you're more comfortable with that. Paper is still wet um, and I'm using a thirsty brush to kind of pick up some pigment there. Um, it's a windy path, so it'll be, um, you can only see small bits of it off in the distance. So that is the effect I'm trying to create. It doesn't have to be done in this particular moment. You could always wait for the whole thing to dry down and then go and scrub things out. If you aren't using staining paints, it should be pretty easy to scrub things out. So what I'm doing now is adding some yellow there because that's probably where the light will be more pronounced. If you remember to do it, good. If you don't, you can always go back in and put some gouache bits down off in the distance once you're done with the piece when you're adding the highlights. So now I'm drying things off with the dryer and we're ready to move on to the second layer once this has completely dried. So we mapped out everything and now we're just going to go in and punch up some parts and add more detail. So now I've switched down to a smaller brush. I'm going to use a round two um, to put down the darks and then I'll use the round six to go blend it out. So I'm picking up some Payne's Gray and I'm going to add some lines to the base of each of these uh, green bits. So I'm just adding the shadow areas of, of these little pieces of landmass. There's no um, plan really. All I'm trying to do is not make it very symmetrical or get a very defined shape a few jagged ends here and there to make things look more natural. That's all I'm going for. I'm working fairly quickly. So I put in all of the darks in one shot and then go and blend all of them out together. If it's more comfortable for you, you could do this one at a time. Um, by that, I mean you could put in the dark bit for one landmass and then go and blend it out and then put the dark part for the other landmass and then go blend it out, so on and so forth. You don't have to do it all in one go. Do what works uh, best for you. At this point, I noticed that um, uh, this 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 side of the paper was uh, lifting easier than I thought it would. Um, so that wasn't part of my plan, but 
doesn't matter uh, when you're painting a loose landscape uh, you know things like that just add to the character things that are you know don't go according to plan usually end up adding more character to your piece so just roll with the punches enjoy it so uh, things are still wet so I go in and put in more darks um, you know looking for these accidental bleeds um, looking for uh, texture um, so when things are still wet and some are partly dry you get some interesting textures so that was what I was going for you can see some of the colors bleeding out and here I'm just trying to break up the greens a little more um, when when the thing the entire painting is done you'll notice that this looks like you know just bends and curves in the pathway so I'm just adding more darks here and there suggesting you know shadows of other little um, patches of grass that are farther off in the distance um, so you don't have to be very exact or precise with these things um, just just plop them down and you know your your mind will tell you it resembles something so I'm just lightly wetting those areas and I'm going to drop in some darker color there as well. Again, I'm using a round two here, uh, picking up some paints gray and going and dropping in some darks. I intentionally picked a smaller brush. Um, I usually paint with just one, uh, one round. I mean, it's usually the round six, but the round two gives you a little more control, uh, helps you control the amount of paint that you put down. So I didn't want the entire thing to be overtaken by dark colors. So I um, switched down to a smaller brush. So again, now with the round six, I've taken some ward jeans, dusty green, and I'm going to work on the foreground. The most detail should be reserved for the things in the foreground. So I'm just um, punching up the greens in some of the uh, land masses that are closer to us. I noticed some of that was just forming a funny little line and I didn't want that so I'm just cleaning that up blending things out a little not uh, letting anything stand out too dark um, in, in, in the background again we'll be going back in and putting some trunks there so don't worry too much about it now I'm using a little bamboo uh, pen um, to drag the pigment up uh, Remember to not do this in one direction, kind of move your pen around a little, um, you know, if you flick to the right, make a couple of flicks to the left. So you want the grasses to look a little random. So now I'm dropping in some paints gray at the base of these. And you'll see me use the bamboo pen again to pull these darks into the grass. I really like the effect that this makes. I've been uh, um, experimenting with this lately and I've really been enjoying drawing my grasses out like this. So now I'm going back in with some raw umber violet and I'm gonna uh, put it at the base of these land masses just to add some variation. You would expect there to be some brown in pathways so this is just me doing that. You'll see me blend it out. The blades of grass were still wet at this point, so you'll see some of it mix in, and that's fine. You can always punch those up at a later point once this layer is dry. Adding a little more pigment of raw umber violet because watercolor dries really light um, you could always go back in and do additional layers if it's not saturated enough but if you paint often enough you kind of get a feeling for when you should add more reduce the number of layers that you're making it's okay to be a little lazy <laughs> and plan ahead
So now that layer is completely dried and we are going to go and put in some details now. So I'm picking a rigger brush and I'm using um, Coastal Fog which is um, which is a color that has a little white pigment. So you want to pick something like a buff titanium or any any of your um, pigments um, in your palette that have a little white in them. And with these, uh, I'm just making quick flicks of my brush, um, adding little trunks and branches um, off in the distance. So what looked like um, just a blob of green um, starts looking more like a tree line once you add these trunks and branches. These don't all have to be uniform. Um, the idea is to make little, you know, uh, dots and dashes that are not symmetric. Um, don't go overboard with these. You don't need too many. Um, but, you know, make some at an angle. Uh, make them smaller, say, uh, you know, it approaches the center part. Um, do some that are in, uh, uh, curved, uh, do some that are curved, they look more like branches. And now I'm doing the same thing but with Payne's Gray. Again, smaller branches and smaller trunks closer to the center, but larger as it goes towards the edges. Do some of them at an angle, make some of them curved. If some of them look very, um, if they stand out too much, try and uh, kind of buff them out with your finger. I'm using the same rigor brush to, you know, make some more dots and dashes. Adding some texture to the, to the background. don't want to go overboard with these because you don't want too much detail in the background but just some you know minor hints that texture in the background is fine So now I have a round two brush and I'm going to take some car yellow, very thick car yellow, um, not too much water um, and I'm doing dry on dry here. Um, just putting in some flowers. Um, you don't have to shape these, you just have to, you know, um, uh, use your brush to put in some little dots and dabs. Make them smaller as you go um, in closer to the background. All of this will help you achieve some depth in your painting. In the very distance, all they are like uh, are, all they are is very small dots. They can be larger, closer in the foreground. This is to suggest flowers. Um, you can't really tell each individual flower, so when they're all bunched together like that, it's just you know like little bands of yellow that you can see. And once this is done, you dry it off. And then now what I'm doing is picking a color that's closer to white, but not white. So I'm not trying not to use bleed proof white, uh, but I'm using uh, colors that have white pigment. So this is coastal fog uh, and I'm just dropping in a few highlights on all of those uh, flower patches that we put in. And anywhere else that you find is too dark and it could, you know, use a little lightning, you could always do this. An alternate would be to use a clean brush and scrub things out. Um, but yes, when you have, you know, something like a buff titanium or like this coastal fog, why not use it? Again, you want more detail in the foreground and less detail as you go into the background. And that's it. 
Time to peel the tape off and enjoy some clean edges. I did think that some of the paint would have bled through the tape, but it did not, which is great. There you have it, that's a finished piece. So here's a look at the four different versions of the same composition. You can see that every time around it looks slightly different. It's all the same but different at the same time. I use the same colors for all four attempts at this composition. We have raw umber violet which is the little brown bits in the foreground. Absolutely adore this color. And there's Payne's Grey for all of the dark parts, Indigo for all of the darks off in the distance, Earthen green is my darker green. Ward jeans, dusty green is my mid-tone green. We have car yellow for the beautiful light in the middle and also for the lovely yellow flowers and carmine for the beautiful red in the sky. If you don't mix your carmine and car yellow as much, then you get a brighter painting. And if you mix it a little, then you get something that's moodier. I hope you enjoy this. Give it a try.